shady. Like, no doubt he's trying to do something. He's trying to trick her. So I don't care if he visited you in the hospital or whatever. That doesn't matter. He is not right. And I would question staying with him. Okay. I think that one is like really obvious.
you don't have enough seats for everyone you invited, then what are you trying to say? Like, it doesn't matter who got there first. There has to be a seat for everyone. It is the most rudest thing I have heard of in a while. Absolutely absurd. And if I were, I wouldn't have stayed and sat at another table because I just would have been fed up. Why would I even want to sit by myself at that point when they're just like, oh, well, you know, you can go home. Be like, they don't want me here. I'm out. It wouldn't be like, oh, I just want to stay so I can get a free meal kind of thing, you know? Horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Horrible. The mother is horrible. And her son is equally bad if he does not understand what is going on here. Okay. Now let's play with the strawberry. I love this thing. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Look at this. Have you ever...
giving the mother-in-law a fake key, okay? So she just should have said no and put her foot down and let that be it. But she decided to just, I mean, I guess she was thinking, I'll just shut her up by giving her a fake key so she'll leave me alone. But ultimately, when the mother-in-law did what she promised she wouldn't do, she came to the house when it was not an emergency and let herself in. She proved herself to be unworthy of the key. But it's not a good situation. They both wind up looking bad in truth. They are both in the wrong. I think the mother-in-law is much more wrong. And the, um, the husband, you know, the son, He's not right either because he doesn't understand that his wife doesn't want the mother just walking in unannounced, especially when they're, you know, doing things. And why he doesn't care, I don't know. But anyway, they're both wrong. I don't think that the poster should have to apologize to the mother-in-law, though. I just think it's just another situation where you, you got yourself a messed up mother-in-law and you got a husband who just really hasn't completely cut the uh, apron strings. Okay. People have some really messed up family lives, I must say. Alrighty. Um, me, 24 female, and my boyfriend, 26, have been dating for around nine months. I've been riding horses since around four years old. When I started taking lessons, when I was 10, I started helping out this girl at the stable with her horse, Lady. At 12, she had to sell due to time and interest and asked if me and my parents wanted to buy Lady. Luckily for me, my parents were able to buy her and she's been mine ever since. She's my bestest friend. She's owned this horse for 12 years. When I started to date my boyfriend, I was very honest with the fact that my horse takes a lot of time. So she's an example of a horse girl. If you've ever heard of the term horse girl. Okay. And he was fine with this. When single, I could spend like three to four hours a day in the stable. But as we started dating, I cut this down to about three hours every other day, as this is roughly how long it takes for me to do all the cleaning, preparing, food riding. It's a big commitment. But that's what she likes. Also, most of my friends are at the stable, which obviously means this is also social for me. The other days, I would not ride and try to spend less time talking, which would make it about an hour. After about six months, he told me I spend too much time at the stable, and I should prioritize my relationship more, and somehow his family got involved, oh no, said it was strange to prioritize the way I I wasn't comfortable with this, but I am a bit of a pushover, so I agreed. At first, this meant cutting down time at the stable, but it has evolved into cutting down riding days. Now I can ride about two days a week, and the rest I'm simply there to do the basics. All 
maybe she does spend too much time with the horse, but that is what she told him to begin with. You know, he shouldn't come in expecting her to change, and if this is her life, and how she chooses to live it, then that's up to her. And you don't tell somebody to put down their animal for no reason. Why would she? That, that just shows you what kind of guy he is. That he's not an animal lover, he doesn't care. No, move on, that's it. Get out of there. Let's switch to these again, okay. My husband, 33, used to be unemployed for a year. He recently started a job at a warehouse yesterday, and while I was about to do the laundry, I grabbed his work pants and dug my hand in its pockets to empty them before putting it in the washing machine like I always do. My husband just happened to walk by when he saw me searching in his pants pocket. He rushed in yelling at me to put his pants down. I already had a folded piece of paper out, but he snatched it, then started screaming at me about how I have no respect for his privacy and that I shouldn't be getting my hands on his things. I was genuinely dumbfounded. I told him to take it easy. I always do this before laundry. He lashed out saying I had no right and should have come to him and asked him first because he was worried about important documents getting lost like the one I pulled out. I said important documents shouldn't be inside his pockets and asked to see the paper but he said he won't show me. I asked why and he said I don't get to ask him Jack S after I disrespected his privacy. I almost laughed because what privacy does he have in pockets? I wasn't like a stranger. It wasn't like a stranger was digging into them. He refused to speak to me and later brought a new closet with a lock and moved his clothes inside of it. I asked if he was serious and he said this will teach me to respect his privacy and deter my snooping, then went back to not speaking to me. <sighs> well, alright. The fact that he used to be unemployed and recently started a job doesn't really have anything to do with this, but whatever. So, I uh, just want to see where these pants in the laundry. No. I don't know, you know, like, I don't go through anyone's pockets if their clothing is not in the laundry, okay? Like, that's kind of over the top. You know, once you put it in the laundry, like in the hamper or into the machine, if I'm gonna wash the clothing, I can check the pockets. Not that I always do, sometimes I do. It depends on what's been happening lately. Like, if the last time I did the laundry, somebody left like a tissue in the pocket, then I'm gonna check the next time. You know, like fool me twice kind of thing. But the only reason I'm checking is because I don't want to wind up washing tissues, napkins, papers, sticks of gum, you know what I mean? Pens, like all kinds of things have been in the laundry, believe me. So, anyway, I understand she's doing the same thing that I would do. But the difference is she's taking pants that he did not put in the laundry yet. But maybe that's how they work it at their house, 
I feel bad for them. Clearly their mother is a little bit 